It's your boy, Andy, and I'm joined here again with his boy, Gabe. Yeah, and together, you guys, you know that we are the podcast that is called Who Who Let Let You Watch That? That? You guys, week by week, we are (laughs) examining and exploring the trauma of youth through movies. And this week, you guys, it is still spooky season, and things are all scary and spooky and terrifying. So scary. And we got a very special guest with us today. Before we get into that, we always do the thing where we ask each other, Gabe, if we have any new business. This week, I, I really don't have much new business, my friend. So, Gabe, do you have any new business? No, just, you know, last week's episode, by the time you guys are hearing this, it was uh, Barbarian. And Barbarian, again, kicked ass and it was a lot of fun. It was super ridiculous and amazing. Uh, you know, we spoiled the hell out of that uh, every second of that <laughs> movie. So, sorry. Uh, th- I guess the new business is just sorry for those that were annoyed. But we did s- say spoiler alert like 15 times, just FYI. So we we gave you guys plenty of warning. We did before, during, and even after it. So we got our bases covered for sure. For sure. The movie's been out for like a month and a half now. If you haven't seen Barbarian, you didn't want to see it anyway. Exactly. Yeah. You'll see it on streaming, <laughs> but by then you'll forget all the stuff we said. It's fine. Exactly. It's okay. Exactly. Yeah. Andy, guys, that's all my new business, dude. Um, dude. We, I feel like when we have a guest, certainly one of this caliber, we, we kind of have to cut oh. the bullshit and get yeah. right to it. It's very important. We, 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 we really need to. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. we could talk about what burrito I had for lunch today, but. Oh, wait. No, hang we, on. Never mind. Our guest can wait. You had a burrito? What's that? What did you say? <laughs> you know what? I, <laughs> I, you know what? I had an enchilada from uh, an awesome Mexican pl- food place that you recommended, actually. So thank you. Well, I've been delicious. to Seattle many, many times, my friend. So You are the man, dude. You are yeah. the man. Anyway. Speaking of the man. Speaking of the man. We have the man. Finishing out our crazy, exciting, spooktacular month of scary movies and everything, we have uh, um, a, a man that needs no introductions. He is he is the dude. He um, he is a, the lead singer, vocalist of the band Touche Amore. He is uh, runs a record label called Secret Secret Voice. Um, he is a podcaster, uh, podcaster of the the first ever podcast, which I've recommended on this podcast. He is the man, the myth, the legend. He, we thank him very much for being here. Mr. Jeremy Baum. Woo! <laughs> it's quite an intro. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'll take any opportunity to talk about movies with just about anybody. Um, my, uh, it, you know, it's just, it gives my fiance a break for the night for me, for me doing it to her. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Dude, you fit in right with us because uh, Gabe and I, all we ever do is – that's why we really started the podcast so we would stop bugging our wives and yeah. talk to each other about <laughs> movies that we saw. Yeah. So just like get <laughs> out of the of house. Them. Go talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and um, Andy, you, f- you forgot one thing. Uh, I mean, what did I forget? Y- you said uh, you know, with, with Jeremy's introduction, the man is also a poet. Oh, a <laughs> poet, yes. Let's let's that not is- get carried away. I do my best, but I appreciate it. <laughs> let's let's uh, yeah. That, there's there's certain titles that I'm that I'm still a little apprehensive to want to claim, but I I <laughs> let's just say I've tried. Okay. <laughs> I, I no, mean, man, I- most would say succeeded, but all right, try. That's cool. I appreciate it. That's very nice. <laughs> I'm also uh, for listeners at home. I only ha- the only water bottle I own is one that has my own band. Uh, it's like my own band <laughs> branded water. And when I, I'm just always really self-conscious. So if you see me take a, I just need to point it out there that it, I understand that it's corny that I'm drinking my own bands uh, wa- out, of, out of this water bottle, but I just need to put it out there. Dang it. Now, d- to kind of ease you, I wish I was wearing our podcast shirt, Gabe, just so I could have been like, hey, I'm wearing our own merch, too. It's, it's all right, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm just letting you know it's okay. Yeah. You know okay, what I'm saying? Cool. Like we're 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 all allowed to to be a little self indulgent. Yeah, <laughs> that's the it's mo a, of the podcast, anyway. You know, it's like going to a concert back in the day when you you weren't supposed to wear the band of the the band you were seeing. Who yep. cares anymore? I'm just gonna wear oh. whatever. I'm, I'm pushing forty. I don't care what anybody thinks anymore. <laughs> that's that's freedom, my yeah. friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys. Um, Jeremy was very nice to be on the podcast with us. Um, as you go back and you listen to my recommendation, um, I suggested to him because there was an episode you did, Jeremy. I, I think I told you, I was pretty sure it was Anthony Green, where you guys basically 
talked about what Gabe and I do on this podcast where we examine movies that we saw when we were way too young. So I shot it out there and you said, yeah. And you came to us with a movie. Oh, that I'm so excited to, to talk about. And I, I was ready for any movie you dropped on us. I'm very excited that you went in the horror genre just because it fits perfect with our themes and everything right now. So thank you for that. Um, Jeremy, if you were able to listen to our, any episodes beforehand, what we do in the beginning is we play a little bit of a game where we ask our guest to describe the movie that we're going to watch. Because right now the listeners have no idea. No idea. They don't know. They don't know what we're going to talk about. It's a guess. <laughs> they don't read the title of the episode or anything. Nope. They just go in blind. So, Jeremy, we're going to ask you, can you describe this movie in five words or less? I certainly can. But it also I mean, if the point is to to not give away the title, the, <laughs> the word is definitely in the five words. Right. So the five the five word pitch, the elevator pitch, shall we say, is a uh, human versus alien in space. Got it. Nailed five. it. Human versus alien in space. Do you, do you know what it is, listener? Do you have any you idea what it, what it could possibly be? <laughs> you guys, of course, we are talking about the 1979 Ridley Scott masterpiece. 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 Alien. Alien. Andy, allow me. I'm going to read the actual log line. I mean, everyone got it, of course. I mean, Jeremy's oh, yeah, five words or less. He nailed it. So everyone's like, we get it. You don't need to re read the log line. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. All right. The crew of a commercial spacecraft encounter a deadly life form after investigating an unknown transmission. 1979 R rated Ridley Scott directed and Dan O'Bannon written. OK, the guy is a hell of a writer. He's done a million things. Uh, I mean, one of the coolest things he's written other than this movie is Return of the Living Dead. You know, how mm -hmm. important is that? Especially as we have a, you know, I mean, a hardcore king on here. I, I think the, the punks in Return of the Living Dead were the original hardcore kings. I just got to say that, you know. <laughs> 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 we're finding all these ways to tie it in tonight, man. We sure. Yeah, yeah, there's mohawks in there for yeah, sure. There's, there's mohawks for sure. <laughs> there's leather jackets with the arms cut off. Uh, the sleeves, rather. Uh, if we want to take it, if we want to take two seconds to, to talk about, unless we want to come back to Dan O'Bannon, do we want to come back to Dan O'Bannon? No, no, or do dude, we, go should for we it. do it? Should we do it now? Do it now. Yeah, if you have anything, please jump in, my friend. I mean, what I mean, what a flex this guy has to the point where, yes, he has Return of the Living Dead, of course. Like that's that's a standalone fun, like you know, obviously like comedy horror movie. But like the fact that early in his career he has a movie with Ridley Scott. And then yeah. he does, uh, he also has, uh, what, Dark Star, which is John Carpenter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he has yeah. a John Carpenter movie. Yeah. He also has, uh, which was a total childhood movie of mine. I don't know if you guys ever saw uh, Invaders from Mars. Yes. But that's Toby Hooper, who did Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's right. So it's like, so he has all of this, like, really awesome, you know, like, collaborators, like, you know, at a at a really special time, I think, in uh, in movie history of... Uh, but with like the horror and comedy horror and sci-fi horror genre, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. 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 The, I Dude. mean, I'm making light of it. I truly do love, love uh, Return of the Living Dead. It's super fun. Uh, one of my yeah. first like horror comedies that I got into, I think after I saw American oh, yeah. Werewolf in London, I was like, ooh, I got to see this one next. And yeah, loved it. Loved it. Uh, still have it on VHS, by the way. I've got a collection nice. of my like childhood VHSs over here and it's like, that's in it. But yeah, dude's dude's a king, you know. I mean, everybody Absolutely. that that worked on this film, Alien, uh, including Ridley Scott, who's an absolute genius, um, they all went on. Most of them went on to do amazing, gigantic things. But uh, yeah. bef before we talk about cast, Andy, I know you want to throw out some some cast names. Uh, I got to mention our production designer on this, Mr. Michael mm. Seymour. Holy hell! I mean, just incredible iconic iconic works you yeah. know we, we've got we've got the man hr giger himself uh but you know working in conjunction with good old hr we've got yeah. michael and yows of the work that michael did is incredible um just yeah this movie is a visual masterpiece from beginning to end so yeah stylistically the movie can, is amazing can i throw out one other person i want to make sure gets a good shout yeah oh uh, yes producer walter hill you guys, Walter Hill heads at all. Uh, so, Walter Hill. Drop, drop some names. 
Okay, so Walter Hill, uh, he is a producer on this, but he wrote Aliens, right? And oh. then he himself is a director of some of the, like the most fun action genre, uh, action like genre movies of like the seventies and eighties. Like, uh, have you guys ever seen the movie Streets of Fire? Streets of Fire. Streets oh, of yeah. Fire was Walter Hill. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, like he had here. Uh, let me let me let me rattle off some greatest. It's fa- he did the Forty Eight Hours movie. Yeah. Amazing. Um, oh, yes. So he, yes. So he's got that. Uh, and then okay, so strap in strap in walter hill we got uh hard times which which is a uh, charles bronson boxer movie yeah uh he's got the driver which is basically that movie drive with ryan gosling is basically just a remake of that he directed the warriors the warriors yeah oh there it uh, is he's got 48 hours he's got streets of fire he's got uh red heat that uh that schwarzenegger movie um <laughs> he's got this movie called johnny handsome which uh, I would really throw out there for anyone to check out because it is psycho. It's uh, so it basically it's Mickey Rourke um, and a very young Morgan Freeman, one of his first movies, I think. But uh, it's literally about a so the, the tagline is after being double crossed and thrown in jail, a deformed gangster gets a new face and rehabilitation, but his desires for revenge looms. So basically he gets like turned oh. on, gets facial reconstruction thing and then joins the gang with them not knowing that it's him. So that's why it's called Johnny Handsome. Like it is just such great like just genre movies. Um, so like uh, so uh, I have a, my I have a one of my best friends. He's a he's a huge film guy too. And like basically, um, we are uh, we're just Walt. We're huge Walter Hill heads. Okay. So like the fact that he's like a producer on this one, and then obviously goes on to write Aliens. I'm just like, let's make sure that guy gets a shout. Okay, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, thank you for that. He also did uh, 2012's Bullet to the Head with Sylvester Stallone. Oh, like, <laughs> dude, still doing it. Still he's doing. Got, it. And and he's got a new one coming out. Yeah. He's got a new one coming out. Yeah. Uh, uh, Put it which, on the calendar. Yeah, it's uh, fuck. Who's who's? It's someone. I mean, I think it has someone very legit in it. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a few people. It's it's yeah. uh, It's got Willem Dafoe, who will always do stuff with him, and Christoph Waltz. Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, whatever happened to Baby Jane? Sign me up. Yeah. Oh um, my gosh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Hillhead. Yeah, I got I'm season, I got I season be a tickets now. I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A new appreciation was gained. There's, there's some movie. I'm telling you, there's some movies in the 70s and 80s there that are so fun. Like, mm. there's a movie called okay. Extreme Prejudice, which is crazy. Like, there's just he is, he's, uh, he's batting a thousand. Let me tell you, he's. <laughs> let me tell you, his movies are always like 90 minutes long too. It's just like a perfect like throw on at 11:30 at night and just watch something stupid. But yeah. it's like so enjoyable. Uh-huh. <laughs> An ongoing theme of this show is that movies, 90 minutes in and out. See yeah. you later. Exactly. Things need to happen. Just, just tight, <laughs> tight and clean. Comedy, and comedies and horror, comedies and horror specifically. If it's over ninety minutes, you better be bringing something. Right. You better you nail know? it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, dude. Dude, yes, Jeremy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I knew there was a reason why we asked you on. Uh, yeah, that was it. That was all. We're just like, I bet he knows a lot about Walter Hill. So, uh, just, yo, he also wrote movies for Sam Peckinpah. Yeah, like, dude, no, no. He is, like he's he's so sick, and he's still alive. It's funny. I don't know. I mean, this this kind of goes really well with this podcast. It might be a, a fun thing to mention. I don't know if you guys got a chance to listen to it, but just by chance, Sigourney Weaver was one of the newest guests on uh, WTF with Mark Maron, and she oh, talks oh, about really? Alien. Yeah, she like. Oh. She said, you know, she tell, yet. yeah, she tells some pretty cool stories, but also in it, a lot of Walter Hill love. Okay. A lot of, <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> so <laughs> apparently they're I, still friends. It's nice to hear. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. She seems like uh, the, the nicest person in Hollywood. So if Let's someone so. isn't friends with her, I think it's on yeah. them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> dude. Well, yeah. So you mentioned it then, Sigourney Weaver, dude. I mean, what else uh, do we need to say? The woman's. An icon. <laughs> An icon. Yeah. A, the, the, I don't know. This, Ghostbusters, she's, she's uh, aliens. I mean, she's yeah. the queen, man. She's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. she's She is easily the best part of the films in this franchise that aren't as strong. She still, <laughs> I think, does a, an amazing job. I think you, you still have the special effects that are amazing, and you have Sigourney Weaver that's amazing. 
yeah. all the time, day in and day out. Even when you get to like Alien Resurrection, you're just like Scorny Weaver, the aliens themselves, the xenomorphs. Sign me up. I'm I'm on board. Yeah, she's still she's still fantastic. And uh, apparently she can ball because there's a really really ridiculous basketball scene in Alien Resurrection that makes oh. no sense. <laughs> but but God that's bless my favorite him, part know? of the whole movie. Yeah, God bless him. <laughs> the the crews have to blow off steam. They have to have a little bit of fun. They got to get silly, you know. <laughs> Sometimes like, that ends up in the movie. <laughs> isn't like a part of the the thing though too that like because she's now like this you know like like you know the 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 resurrected version and then she's like you know all powerful that she can ball like. <laughs> Yeah, I think they were like they were looking for a plot device. They're just like, all right, we got to show that she can do everything. That she's this like perfect archetype. Well, you know what a <laughs> what a white woman can't do is just school a bunch of dudes on the court. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's so tough. It's a tough. It's a tough part. Yeah. Yeah, I get. I can just imagine that's what the writers' room was. They're like, eh, just kicking around ideas. Oh, what if we do this? Yeah. Yeah. They said, you know, know, this is Alien 4, everybody. You know what Alien 1 through 3 was missing? (laughs) Basketball. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, there's a lot uh, from this first one. There's a a lot on the cutting room floor. There's supposed to be a 33 minute basketball scene on the (laughs) the Stromo, you know? So just, yeah. But instead, they (laughs) spent the budget on a cat. They're just like, ah, the cat instead. (laughs) Yeah. Who else we got in this? We got Harry Dean Stanton being uh, like if a cigarette was a human, like that dude's just that way the whole time, you know. If it's just an anthropomorphic uh, cigarette became a person, that's that's our boy right there. <laughs> we got but, Tom Skerritt. Tom you know. Skerritt in his heartthrob years too. <laughs> I, know, honestly, I think I think he's a good looking dude. I think he's you know he's 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 commanding and he's doing a good job. He's not yeah. kind of the goofball that he is today, or you know. <laughs> and we got yeah. Yafet Koto, <laughs> who is so fucking sick in this. He is I am. Great. I love Yafet Koto. Yeah. And the fact that we get Yafet Koto and Harry Dean Stanton as like this duo. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Great writing. Great it, casting. It's fantastic. I mean, just nonstop comedic relief, mm. but also kind of the only characters you really care about. I don't know. At least I did. I was like. This dude just wants to get home, you know? This dude wants to get paid because he's out here working his ass off, putting his life on uh, in danger. I want, I want to know what this <laughs> dude... Like, when he gets home, he's definitely the star of his own sitcom, you know? like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... it's uh, you know, you talk about plot devices, but, like, uh, they're perfect in this because they're the two... They're like the everyman, you yeah, know? Like, they're, sure. they're the relatable characters. Where, yeah. where, you know, you put us in space, you put us in this really you know, a uh, ridiculous situation that no one, you know, on earth can actually relate to. So it's, you're finding things to relate to. And it's like, what can you relate to? Two hardworking guys who are overworked, who are looking to make a buck and just go home and rest. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Like Andy in this hotel room right now, just, <laughs> just <laughs> trying to get some rest. Just try. Uh, we got, we got Kane, Mr. John Hurt. Okay. Who mm. is, you know, very very fancy until he comes to his untimely end uh and the original hobbit mr ian holm as ash baby mm-hmm. let mr. me ask Milk you guys himself w- there's certain actors that when you see them in something uh especially something you know like this uh, uh where he has got he's got such a specific role that you know obviously has like a strong turn uh does it affect how you see him in movies going forward yeah, yeah. I, I like. Yeah. I wasn't surprised in uh, in the Lord of the Rings when he went full like spook, scary face on Frodo because I was like, yeah, he's a bad guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never like, trusted him. Yeah, like that. That's exactly. I mean, that's exactly it. Like the never. You like it's hard to trust him when you see him in a movie because you've seen this. It's like uh, I'm. I don't know if you guys ever saw the Killing of a Sacred Deer, but yeah. like Bar- Barry Keegan is someone that when he comes when he appears in a movie, I'm like. I don't just don't I just don't know. Yeah. I I don't know. For sure. And uh yeah. It's a, sure it's enough a, he's he's usually conniving. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's a testament to, to no their good. ability as actors, you know, a hundred percent. But also I think so much of it is like what we talk about on the podcast, you know, seeing these movies in your formative years, you know, especially it's like 
okay, that character, if they're effective, like, you know, if the story's great or if it was particularly traumatic, whatever, that's burned into your mind. So every time you see that character, you're like, oh, no, he's a bad guy. Or, like, (laughs) that dude, I don't care if he's bad in this movie. He's great. He's got a heart of gold. You know, he'd be playing a total... (laughs) total dildo but you're like no this guy's this guy's great you know he's wonderful yeah so yeah <laughs> i i think that's also like sigourney weaver like i i love sigourney weaver she's awesome you know but uh because i i saw ghostbusters like way too early and i was like yeah sigourney weaver is like fun and sexy and cool you know like she's great and everything so yeah i guess even in my head i don't know that she's the nicest person in hollywood i guess i just made that up I just want her to be the nicest person <laughs> in Hollywood. She is definitely the most badass woman in in uh, in Hollywood, though. She's pretty badass. I mean, yeah. There's there's many great lines and many amazing scenes that I'm sure we'll talk about in this movie. But beautiful, Andy. Anybody else on this list that we absolutely gotta talk about? I'm sure we'll talk about everybody in due time as we get to the rewatch and all that. But you know, anything yeah. right off the top of your head that we need to bring up? No, not, nothing else. I, I bet Jeremy's got a fantastic story, you know, to, to tell us about the first time he saw this movie. So I, I think I think we jump into that, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Jeremy, can okay. you tell us a story of who yeah. let you watch this? So I'll say that I don't know, the, like, a specific – I don't have a specific, like, oh, this was the moment when I saw it. But I'll set I'll set it up this way. Basically, like – kid of a you know i'm a latchkey kid you know i'm a i'm a child of divorce so what that meant is my mom's home at five me and my asshole friends are watching whatever we want when we get home from school right we're not being policed on what we're watching any of that so my friends and i we're trading vhs's you know like who's got what you know we're watching everything um what this did was uh gave me a large appetite for violent movies at a very <laughs> young age. And it also hindered my interest in things that I should have been enjoying at that time. For instance, <laughs> I was never a star Wars guy. And I also, and I didn't even, uh, and this not necessarily as a flex, it became kind of a bit later, but like, I didn't even <laughs> see those original movies until like b- within the last 10 years. Wow. And, wow. um, it was kind of like one of those dickhead point of prize where I was like, I've never seen fucking Star Wars. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I just like, I just like annoy the other guys in my band who are huge Star Wars heads and like be like, oh, is that the one with the yellow guy in the beeping trash can? Just like, <laughs> um, but, uh, but so like, because I remember as a kid, like I, I had already like my favorite movies were Alien, Aliens, Predator, Terminator, Terminator 2. And then, like, this whole laundry list of, like, fucking Seagal and Norris movies. Like, yeah, all yeah, of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like, I was, like, I was just lapping it up. Loved it so much. It was, like, so much fun. Like, if I'm not watching it, I'm, like, you know, fucking playing some version of it with my friends in the backyard. Yeah, right? For sure. So, um, love G.I. Joe. Like, all of that sort of stuff. So, like, um, what I was getting at is, like, I remember one time I went to a different friend's house. Maybe it's a family member's house or something. And they had on Return of the Jedi. And I remember just looking at it being like, like goofy puppets and shit. Like you're into this. Like this looks like Sesame street. I don't understand the appeal. And that stuck with me. And like, I'll even say when I rewatched or when I actually did watch originally, like those first three movies, I connected with empire. I liked empire, but like, I remember when I watched return of the Jedi, I was like, I, I could see why I didn't like this as a kid. Um, but so yeah, like, uh, I was exposed, you know, I don't remember whose copy it was or anything like that. I had my best friend growing up. His name was Eric and he lived around the block and also a child of divorce. Only he lived with his dad. I lived with my mom and his dad, I'm pretty sure just like had all of these VHSs that we were just <laughs> yeah, like did. taken from and whatever else. Um, so yeah, uh, I remember watching it and um, it, I don't ever really remember it being too scary uh to me as a kid i remember being more so exciting um obviously like the chest burster scene is like something Mm -hmm. that um always had a bit of an impact um 
But I'll also say that, especially at that age, when I saw Aliens, like I was like probably more into Aliens because it's more of like an action movie, like yeah. way more mm-hmm. of an action movie. For sure, yeah. And my love for Alien, the original, I think came back around maybe in like my 20s or something like that. And where I could really differentiate between the two genres and also really like get into the whole Ridley Scott did this one. James Cameron did this one. David Fincher did this one. Jean-Pierre did this one. You know, like I like once that sort of stuff started to really kind of like germinate, I I think that's where my love for this movie and also the, you know, like the whole series as a whole really set in. Cause I'm a fucking alien head. I am <laughs> like, I, I fucking worship at the altar of Prometheus. I think it's fantastic. I'm a fan of covenant. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm writing in. I don't have much to say about the Alien versus Predator movies. I don't have a lot to say about those. But but uh, you know but what I, I do? Them. They're fun. I I own them. The first one is trash. The fact that it's PG thirteen, <laughs> right? The f- right is like uh, is a crime. Yeah. Um, also terrible, just like setup. But uh, yeah, the second one it had gave us a little more. It's in the city streets, which is super fun. Mm-hmm. And also, it's, I'm pretty sure that one's rated R. So it has, like, you know, elements yeah. or whatever. But yeah. anyway, um, <laughs> that, that was, uh, so I think that, that's the, arch of my sto- the arc of my story is that, like, I saw it with some friends, you know, like a bunch of friends. We all watched it. Um, we all got really into it. And then it fucked up um, my, uh, what I should have <laughs> been enjoying at that age, uh, which was probably, like, seven, eight, probably around Whoa. that age. It was yeah. that young. That Very young. young. Very young. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Oh, very <laughs> too young. <laughs> so, I mean, like, also, I, I was already a huge... I mean, you mentioned Ghostbusters earlier. Like, I was already... Like, Ghostbusters, to this day, is, like, a top five favorite movie of all time. Yeah. Um, As it should and be. And so, yeah. like, I knew Sigourney Weaver from that, you yeah. know? So, all of a sudden, I see her in this, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, it's yeah. the same person. And that was really exciting to me. I remember as a kid um but i mean also like i remember watching top gun and then being like oh there's tom scarrett like this guy's in this movie you know like Mm -hmm. so uh you know connecting all those dots and that was you know it was exciting it's like it's like what made you want to keep watching van damme movies because you're like he's fucking cool (laughs) in this and then he's cool in this he's kind of doing the same thing but it's cool (laughs) he's Um, he's gonna do this again (laughs) yeah so that that's my setup uh dude that's fantastic (laughs) Missing, missing the, like the standard films as a seven to nine year old because you're busy watching, <laughs> you know, R-rated, you know, canon films basically. Like, totally. Dude, it's yeah. That's amazing. That's fantastic. I mean, both Andy and I watched our fair share young, but we yeah. had other stuff in the mix, dude. Like, we definitely did. Um, you know, Andy watched. I watched way more like sexual stuff uh, because my mom (laughs) was in the theater and just didn't really, I don't know. She cared, but she didn't care like about that. It was weird. Uh, Sure. And, but, and Andy, his dad let him watch the gnarliest (laughs) shit and watched it with him most of the time. (laughs) Like it's wild. Yeah. But every, you know, Schwarzenegger, Stallone. Yeah. Roadhouse, you know, was Mm -hmm. our favorite movie. We just, me and my brother would rip each other's throats out. Yeah, constantly. But did you still connect with the like Return of the Jedi's and all that sort of stuff though? Like, were you still open to that? Um, yeah, yeah. So I still, you know, but I was also I was a Muppet kid. Like, I loved sure Muppets. Muppets were my favorite thing in the world when I was a little yeah. kid. Mm-hmm. So it's combining I, your I, combining things you liked then. Exactly. So I was like, yeah, puppets, more puppets. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was way into Jim Henson, and my mom like always would explain like how special effects stuff worked. So I loved it. Like Labyrinth is my favorite movie of all time. Like that. So I was gonna bring it up. That's another movie that I just like. I I I think I turned it off, and mm. I just in the sense not like you know like I'm a dick, like I just or just like it didn't it yeah. didn't do any it didn't yeah. do anything for me. Like Dark Crystal, like all of that mm. sort of stuff. Like. Yeah. I also that kind of leads throughout my life though because I'm genuinely not a fantasy guy. Yeah. Like for the most mm. part, I, I enjoy yeah. like Game of Thrones and stuff like that. Which, but even Game of Thrones took me a few times of watching those first that first episode. I think I had to watch the first episode like three different times. Yeah. To be like, I got to keep going, <laughs> and then eventually I did, yeah. and then loved it, of course, like everybody else. But yeah. Um, 
yeah, like it, stuff like that just has always been a, a little hard for me to to connect with. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense, dude. So then like going forward, you know, you say that was, you know, kind of a common theme, you know, the these movies are incredibly vulgar and incredibly violent. So did you find like you immediately had a like a trash mouth? And, uh, you know, did you have an issue with that, like going to school and talking like a grizzled 40 year old when you were eight? You know, I don't I mean, I specif- specifically remember having like the if I say a bad word, you can tell on me like kind of thing with my like, like, it's OK if I say a bad word to like with my friends and stuff. But like um, at the same time, like it's really soft of me to say, but like I I always really never really wanted to like I don't know like upset my mom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. I like I I, I like resp- I you know I I think I realized as a kid that like she's just work having to work and come home. So like I didn't want to add to that, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think I kind of also realized like if I don't cause friction, it's not gonna like potentially fuck up me watching violent movies. <laughs> so like if I stay the course, I think it's gonna be all right. You yeah, know, yeah, that, that, that's really interesting, man. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, I, I didn't have that. I, as soon as I started watching these movies at that age, I was like, cool, fuck you, you know, like, <laughs> got it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I totally get it. I, yeah, yeah it, I mean, it makes it makes perfect sense. I think I just early on was like, I don't want to jeopardize all the stuff that I like, yeah, you know, like, uh, I, you know, at the same time, I'm like hiding what I'm listening to, you know, like, yeah. I don't, I don't. And I don't even know if my mom would take it away from me, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure she would. Cause I was like, also ha- I had to go to like a Christian pri- like private school for like the elementary mm. school. Uh-huh. Um, so I was already feeling like the wheels could come off at any second, you know? <laughs> so I think I was just trying to keep my head down and enjoy, enjoy my things. <laughs> Not bring too much attention to it. No. Keep the spotlight small. <laughs> exactly. 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 You just got to play the role, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, so it trickled then also into your choice of music at a young age too. Did you go like real heavy right away? Um, not necessarily real. Oh, well, I guess, comp- uh, you're like, no, it's just dark throne. Like it's not a big deal. <laughs> no, like, I mean, well, it's funny to think, cause I, I mean, I, I got into music really, really like I was like obsessed with music really, really young. So like, um, you know, I was, I was born in 83 and like, you know, I, in like 91 when I found what I saw like Nirvana and, and Pearl Jam and all mm-hmm. that stuff, like I was like in immediately. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in 94 after Kurt passes, uh, I, I remember where I was the moment I heard, like really affected by yeah. it. I'm, was, I'm 12 years old. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's or right. left, sorry, 11 years old. I'm 11 years old when it happens because it happens also the day before my birthday. Oh, um, oh, shoot. oh And so, uh, and then, you know, from there I ended up getting, you know, like, but at the same time I was listening to the Black Album. I was listening to Guns N' Roses. I was listening, you know, like, so I, I was yeah. into all this stuff and had like bullshitted my way to like the record store that the guys would sell me the parental advisory stuff, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. So yeah, I was listening to, to, you know, stuff that maybe I shouldn't have been. I certainly didn't understand the references. I mean, like to go back to Ghostbusters, did I understand that he, that Dan Aykroyd was getting a blow job from a ghost? I didn't get that scene. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah, exactly, that didn't, yeah. it to me is just, I'm just like, I'm like, she pulled his pants down and he's just making a face. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Um, yeah exactly. So what a goof. <laughs> yeah exactly so like yeah there there was only like a couple times that i was ever really policed on what i was listening to one in particular but like that that was you know mm-hmm. it was mostly fine yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic so w- where did you grow up dude as you're taking a sip you grew up here yeah here i'm i'm a, a born and raised burbank california um three of the three of the five of the guys at touche were from we're from Burbank, and then um, Nick is from uh, Nick's from out in the valley. Our other guitar player, he's from he's like a Deep Valley kid, and then our drummer Elliot is from the West Side, so he's from like Mar Vista area. Gotcha. So yeah, we're you know it's a point of pride in our band. We like to consider ourselves like a you know like an actual tr- true and true like <laughs> L.A. band. You LA know, band. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Gabe, Gabe and I are both down here, uh, born and raised uh, Orange County, just just south of y'all. Just oh south yeah. Of y'all. Okay, both you guys are both from Orange County. Okay, what part? Both Orange County. Uh, I live in Anaheim now, and uh, Gabe's over there in uh, 
what Yorba Linda, something like that. Yeah, I'm in the north end. Yeah, but uh, I I grew up in Santa Ana, so okay, you know, yeah. yeah, and Andy grew up not that far away from me, not too far away from me. So yeah, city city of Orange. So yeah, the C of O. Um, as soon as I got a license, or even and kind of even before that, like I spent a lot of time in Orange County. Like my first couple like relationships were with with people who lived in Orange County and then also just like my friend group was always down there. So like any chance mm-hmm. I got, I was either taking the train or going down there. So I have, a, I have a lot of love for, for a lot of those areas. Although I, the gripe I'm always going to have is I fucking hate that you exit the freeway and then you still have to drive like nine and a half miles down a street to get anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Got, yeah. It, it's, it's <laughs> not do. conducive. It's not, it's if, if, if Orange County might as well be Texas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're, we're this like it's weird I, I always consider like we're this landlocked island you can't get to us <laughs> like it's just super strange it's like yeah we we're orange county and we're near the beach but we're also as far away as the middle of the desert like i'm yeah. telling you i'm telling you it kills me it kills yeah. me I'm just like i'm like you're like okay great i exit this i must be almost there soon you're like wait yeah. how's there still 12 more minutes in this drive oh because yeah. i have to drive down this goddamn street for fucking nine miles so that's only damn. like Whittier, man. Every yeah. single time we had to go to Whittier, it was just like, what the hell is going on? I know. Exactly. Hey, <laughs> that's the last one. And then you get into LA and, and all your traffic is just on the freeway. So as soon as yeah. you get off yeah. the freeway, then yeah. you're good. I'd rather just sit on the freeway. <laughs> so what, <laughs> so let, me, let, me ask, let me ask you guys, when did you guys see this movie? Oh, look at that, Jeremy. Look at that. That's exactly what we're about to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gabe, you want to go first or you want me to? Sure, I can I can go first. Yeah, um, I I first saw I think I first saw Resurrection to be totally outing myself. Like, um, if if you were you know Jeremy, if you were like you know hardcore, uh, heavy duty action films, you know from day one, I was you know raunchy movies, sexual thrillers. Uh, with like action sprinkled in, I loved action. Like Michael Dudikoff, you know the the American Ninja series was like on constant rotation. Of course, all the Arnold stuff. I mean, you know, it was all it was awesome. It was great. I loved it. Um, but I was always like you know artsy fartsy weirdo kid. So um, the the ones that I was the most attracted to were also like the ones that were a spectacle and the boxes looked really cool at the, at the video store. So I think that's why I saw resurrection first because neither one of my parents were hardcore into sci-fi. So, um, you know, we definitely saw some sci-fi stuff growing up. You know, we saw star Wars. I liked star Wars. I wasn't way into star Wars. Um, it was way more on the fantasy side with, you know, mom and just, yeah, I just had those movies and had them on repeat, but how, how old were you? Did you see resurrection? Like when it came out? Uh, yeah. I saw it, yeah, because I'm I'm a year older than you, so um, okay. So yeah. were you were you already familiar? Like, had you seen? Because I'm just thinking of like you know, uh, Amelie's got some like sexual comedy nature to it. Like, right. had you seen like Amelie or oh, any yeah. of his? Okay, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, for what it is, what I you know, one of the things I love about the fact that these are really interesting directors did all four of these first movies yeah mm. is that like you can genuinely see their influence on them like for sure they're alien completely resurrection like, experiences and alien resurrection is shot like one of his films yeah like, straight up like for i sure. love delicatessen city yeah. of lost children yeah. like yeah like city I, of lost I'm children f- yeah yeah i'm a i'm a fan and and you know obviously I, who doesn't love amelie yeah but, exactly um it's cra- like the way you know like the zoom in like the real close zoom in like close-up shots and like mm-hmm. obviously he like brings in all his people like there's several actors in resurrection that are in amelie mm-hmm. yeah that are yeah. in you know ron perlman like all of these people that that yeah. are like familiar faces so like yeah his true um, yeah 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 it, i you in know it, i'm not gonna alien be- movie yeah, yeah i <laughs> I don't know that I'm fully comfortable saying I'm an alien resurrection apologist. I can, <laughs> I'll watch it. And every time I watch it, I'm always just like, there are some fucking choices happening in this movie. Right. Yeah. But, <laughs> but at the same time, there's a lot of fucking great, uh, great scenes, like yeah. really, really great scenes in it. There's great scenes. There's great performances. You know, yeah. the, the, the production design and the art direction is still stellar. I mean, there's also some swings and misses, but for <laughs> yeah. the most part, it's pretty amazing. But yeah, so I was super late to the whole franchise. I had heard about it forever. I mean, 
you know, uh, I in the early days of our podcast, I talked a lot more about my uncles. Um, we'll talk about them more in the future because they let me watch a lot of gnarly stuff. Um, and, you know, they were metalheads and stuff. And, and, you know, they were into super gnarly things. So they loved Alien. I probably saw it earlier, but it does, it like, as I was trying to, you know, write down notes for this um, in preparation for this episode, the thing that kept coming to mind was like, no, I think I was like, whatever. I was like in middle school or something and resurrection came out or whenever that was, I'm, I'm trying to even pinpoint exactly. And, uh, or I guess it was high school at that point, but I saw that first and I was super late to the game and, and then went back and watched all of them. But I do have a fun story about alien and HR Giger. Um, as long as we're talking about like, Hey, what's what happened and everything. So right around the same time. So yeah, it had to be, had to be later in the day, uh, later in the, in in my life because i was i was in high school and i was in bands and stuff and everything and i'm i'm like way into guar I, they were one of my first like bands that were like oh this is my thing i think it was like you know danzig and the misfits when i was in like uh i don't know probably sixth grade and then guar the second i hit probably eighth grade or seventh grade even um so i followed them around all over the place um, when I started getting in bands, uh, we actually got to open for them a few times. It was super rad. So I became, I always joke and say I was friends with, uh, it would have been amazing, but I was <laughs> at least an acquaintance of, and someone he remembered, Dave Brocky. So the founding member and singer, the guy who played Odorous in the band. Um, so one of their shows, they were playing up in LA and I went with a bunch of buddies and Dave remembered us and it was super rad and cool. So we were hanging out. We, you know, we genuinely weren't just a bunch of kids bothering them. We were <laughs> hanging out like we were definitely hanging out. And, and, you know, he's telling stories and some of the other guys are telling stories. And I swear I was like, I was like, uh, yeah, I just saw Alien Resurrection. And he's like, that fucking movie's stupid. It's a piece of <laughs> shit. Is fucking dumb. The only one that matters is Alien. That's the fucking movie. And and they all they're all going around like you know debating it and arguing. It was really cool. And uh, and he's like, I'm gonna tell you something. Why why that's the only movie that's worth a shit. He's like, and it's H R Giger, man. H R Giger. He's like that guy. That guy's like that guy's the be all end all. He's amazing. Giger was a huge influence on Brocky, and he was like, you know, this guy's rad and and amazing. And apparently, Giger was a fan. He was a fan mm. of Guar. Would see him when he was in L.A. Guar's on tour in Europe, and they're uh, they're playing in Switzerland. And Giger's there at the show, and he's like, and Dave Brocky does did like the best impression ever. He'd be like, "Oh boys, I really enjoyed the show. You need to come. You need to come spend the day at my at my." My palace. And he kept saying, like, my palace, all, like, fun and wilty. <laughs> and so they had the next couple of days off to go fart around, and they're like, hell yeah, we're going to go to H.R. Giger's house and hang out. So they get there, and they're, like, they, they knock, and, like, no one's coming out to greet them. Nothing. So they think, like, oh, the guy's gone or whatever. He stood us up. He was just, you know, lip service at the show or whatever. What are you going to do? Then Dave says the door opens, and they just – walk in because they're like hello is anyone here and they walk they're walking through this house that's like insane he said that it, it just <laughs> look every room was like very giger-esque with the furniture and certainly like the paintings he said there were giant paintings on the walls huge and they're looking around no one's there but they hear something <laughs> so they le it leads them to the outside into the backyard they go outside <laughs> and dave rocky did the greatest impression ever but he's like He's like, he turns to me, he's like, are you familiar with H.R. Giger's work? And I go, yeah, dude, <laughs> I know Giger's stuff. And he's like, not just the aliens, but, like, you know his stuff. And I was like, yeah, it's like dicks and, and like, robot vaginas and stuff everywhere. He's like, uh-huh. And he's like, so we go out there, and Giger's sitting in a little train, like a, like a child's train, like <laughs> on a train track and everything like that. And he is apparently very drunk, and the train is a giant dick. So it's just a huge <laughs> dick, and Giger is is the conductor, and he's drunk off of his ass, and he's riding this train around these tracks in his backyard, and that was how Guar got to be introduced to his home. 
then he said they hung out and drank and everything like that. So so anyway, that's my story with Alien and H.R. Giger is I heard Dave Brocky <laughs> telling us this amazing story of Giger and his dick train. So there wow. you go. Wow. <laughs> you really think about it, though, aren't we all just sitting in a dick train? <laughs> <laughs> yes, every day. Every day, <laughs> whether we want to admit it or not. <laughs> what a metaphor. What a metaphor. And, and wow. that's life. And that's life. Yeah. That's life. Yeah. Wow. So sorry, long winded, but uh, no, that's it's a special it's, story. It's a cool story. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> well, Andy, when did I, you see this thing? Well, I was riding on this dick train one time, and um, <laughs> um, in, in typical Andy fashion, I saw aliens first. Because yeah. I only I only ever saw sequels. Yeah. I never saw the original movies until much much later. And you know, like Jeremy was saying, James Cameron. You know, it, it, he's the he's for action movies. He's you know just insane at that point. And this movie comes out. It, Aliens is great. It's got Bill Paxton in it, being fantastic. His best role, arguably, next to True Lies. Um, and he's 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 weird great. science weird science okay oh weird ah. so um you know it's it's this insane movie and everything and I, I i don't remember when i saw it but i remember the first time that i realized that i should see it was watching Spaceballs with my dad and the whole john hurt cameo of that movie with the oh no not again and it rips out of his chest again and hello my baby hello my darling yeah um across the room my dad going like you know what that's funny right i'm like not at all what because because it's an alien singing right dad like no it's the first one you've seen it right no dad i haven't so puts it on and it's i think i was probably about probably about nine or so you know and thought it was fantastic then i thought it was a super spooky movie and the whole idea of the the isolation of it all and this the, the spookiness of it was uh, I was on board and to this day I mean there's you know a, a handful of like I think perfect horror movies you know I think it's uh, the thing and alien and maybe Halloween I think are up there you know the shining maybe Texas yeah, Chainsaw. yeah probably the shining I would um, put the shining in there for sure yeah yeah I, now that I'm rattling off names of perfect horror movies, now I'm realizing there's a lot of them. Uh, not a lot of them, but the sh- but Alien is for sure, like in my opinion, a perfect horror movie. It's it's fantastic, and it it that stuck with me. Just the I don't know th- this different sort of take on the genre, and 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 I absolutely fell in love with it. And I to this day I try to watch it. You know every. You know, every Halloween, every October, put that one on, and it's it's still one of my favorite movies ever, and it's it, it still stands up. It's great. I love it, it so much. Absolutely. I mean, you just touched on something that's like I think really important to this to this talk is that like, you know, horror has always been this sort of you know, uh, not re- not very respected genre within you know oh, yeah. like the great the greater the greater scope of cinema and and whatever else. Um, But like it's people like Ridley Scott making alien. It's people like Stanley Kubrick making the shining. It's people like, you know, it's, it's these situations. Friedkin making the exorcist. Exorcist, Like um, it's people who are taking hard, hard swings at something that uh, probably seem like a disaster in the moment, but then has these, huge huge effects for like you know generations to come yeah and uh and it's just like yeah it's just something that i'm always going to be fascinated with you know that 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 uh that when these things in the moment seem like they might be a disaster when you hear about stories of production and things like that and then like yeah it's like i like listening to john carpenter talk about making the thing it sounds like it was Mm -hmm. just the hardest thing to get through but you're like you're left like just oh my god uh, this isn't like a name droppy sort of a situation. I apologize if it comes off that way, but like I'm pretty good friends with this actor named Kier Gilchrist, who's in It Follows. Mm. And listening to him talk to me about making It Follows, I don't know if you both are f- fans of that movie Love at all. It. Yeah. Um, but like even him, like he was like, there was days on the set where just like, I don't understand how this is supposed to be scary. Right. Like where you're you're like, wait, so are you, is there going to be like a CGI monster that's good uh-huh. that we're going to see? And, you know, like, especially yeah. like the first couple of days of that movie. 
uh, where it's just, you know, the, the girl just kind of running from nothing, like in the right. opening scene mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You're just like, I don't understand how this is going to work, but <laughs> right. it works, you know, like it, it's, it's, uh, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I feel like people need to continue to really, I, you know, I think in the age that we're in with like the A24 age, I think it is yeah. coming around a bit where yeah. there is a lot more, you know, auteurs like making stuff that is making an impression, but it's an interesting thing too, because yeah. there's that argument where a lot of young independent filmmakers often make horror movies to start, even though they might not be fans of horror because you're probably going to at least make your money back because there's <laughs> always an audience for it, you know? Yeah. So it's like, if you get a million dollar budget, you're probably making to make three at least, yeah. you yeah. know? And yeah. it's not a, it's not a wash. You didn't lose anyone money. So I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, that's a tangent, but, uh, no, it's, it's, it's a good tangent too. Cause it's, you're right. It's, it's this genre that looks, gets looked down upon, you know, a lot and it's, it shouldn't be. I mean, what, what is horror? It's just, it's, it's a drama where the stakes are very, very, very high. And you know, that's yeah. essentially, you know, what we got going on. It, it is tough uh, though. When you, when you see, when you get a director, who's very, who's like very, who's like, or at least like, has shown that they're very good and then they take a swing at it. Uh, I don't know if yeah. you guys have ever, I, wa- I hadn't seen it. I just watched a movie called The Keep last night. Have you both ever seen the movie The Keep? No. Oh, it sounds so familiar, it, but. It's the, the se- it's the second movie that Michael Mann ever made. He made it right after Thief. Oh. Okay. The Keep. It's tough. No, it's I'm, tough. I'm going to add tough. it. <laughs> it's tough. Uh, it's on Criterion right now. So Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's like, that's one of those things where you're like, oh, he probably, like Michael Mann maybe saw like all of the success that was happening around him with all these other like really respectable directors. Yeah. Like maybe I'll take a swing at this and, uh, it's a miss. It's a miss. miss. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah. He's, Dude. he's like, dis- he's like disowned it. So that even, also, oh, even oh, the log line is a mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Andy, we'll get into that one later, dude. We might have to watch that. <laughs> and we'll put yeah, it out there. Do an episode about <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, it's tough when a movie's like an hour 35 or an hour 40, and you're like, oh, my God, I'm half over. Oh, my God. What is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much more is there? Yeah. Dude. I feel bad, too, because I made like a, a watch, like I posted like a watch list on my Instagram yeah. of like movies that people should watch. And I put some on there that I'd never seen before because I was excited to also watch it. Right. And I put the keep on there. And it's like not until like October 20th. And a part of me wants to like, I wish I could just like go back and edit that out and be like, maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Do it. Maybe, maybe watch something else. <laughs> but it's a conversation piece, you know? Yeah, if, any, you if someone wants to come at me and be like, I watched that piece of shit, and I'd be like, <laughs> I did too, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, on God. that note, we watched something that wasn't a piece of shit, and that is Alien. <laughs> <laughs> we rewatched it, and we have some thoughts. We have some notes. So, you know, Jeremy, the way we normally do this is, you know, we it's it's for the most part – somewhat sequential like we'll kind of you know stick with the uh the not the pacing of the film but like we kind of go you know beginning middle and end type thing but if you have something that really jumped out that you wanted to talk about first we can start there let me full disclosure uh, i did not rewatch this today oh, that's okay. or or whatever because my life is crazy right now oh but, yeah, that's all right man but that's okay but i'm gonna live vicariously through you two retelling it and there will certainly be things that i will likely more than likely jump in on because i have seen this movie at least 50 times you know awesome (laughs) all right well i andy has said this before um i fell victim to watching this movie and taking great notes and then right around where ash you know has some fun just being so into the movie (laughs) i didn't then have another note until the end where it's like yeah yeah shit i'm supposed to be taking notes but it's just it's so good holy crap is this movie amazing but Andy, I don't mind starting things off with Do it, man. smoking on a spaceship. <laughs> how, how every great movie of the 1950s all the way up until probably the mid 90s uh, depicted space. Everyone yeah. is just like, got to get through this slog smoking <laughs> on a spaceship where your oxygen is limited. I just love that. It's one of my favorite things. Game okay. in similar fashion. Same not note. To, you know yeah, it's not the to, future. Yo, not to jump on this too quick, but like also the the very, 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 very start of the movie when you just get like the the little like what's going on. You know, like when yeah. it, it just gives you you just it gets the the yeah. it types across the screen like 
the, where you're at and yeah. how many yeah. people are on the ship yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Like to just set the tone of, of the film is such a, like I'm a big fan of just give me a, give me a brief little, so oh, yeah. like, g- give me, <laughs> give me, set me up. Like, let yeah. me know who's all here. What's the yeah. name of the ship? Yeah. Where are we? What year is it? Right. Like, cause as soon as you say the year, you're like, Oh fuck, we're in the future. Yeah. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like I think that's like a really smart way, especially at this time to like, even just set this up. But yeah. yes, uh, smoking on a, on a spaceship is, it makes not a lot of sense. Right. <laughs> Because while it's the future, you have to remember that it is 1979 and everybody is smoking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Constantly. Everybody, oh, yeah. Everybody's doing it. But that, but that's my thing. I have a collection of old, like, 1950s black and white movies, uh, like uh, the Saturn Go and, and uh, uh, Moon X-14, where, like, it's, like, men essentially in, like, silver business suits and they're smoking and, like, there's a like a sexy stewardess in like a short skirt and she's like bringing them drinks but they're supposed to be astronauts like <laughs> doing like interstellar <laughs> travel it's just hilarious it's like it's a it's a, it's a delicious soup to me that i just <laughs> eat you know it's great <laughs> uh andy uh jeremy how about the trope of uh, this movie is amazing but my first two notes were like ridiculous i too also love the lead in jeremy where it's like what is this? Where am I in the world? Oh, it's the future. That's great. I do also love, we see the scale of the Nostromo. We oh, see yeah. that it's it's a city. It is gargantuan. And who's running it? Seven people. <laughs> like, that is always <laughs> the move in these things. It's like, here's this giant thing that took nine million people to build over their entire lives. It's essentially the pyramids in space. Yeah. And who runs it? Well, a computer really runs it because of the future, but also seven people. It's always like, man, get fucked. Seven people, they're not running this thing. You know, seven people can't operate the, the thing that, uh, that yeah. reroutes the vents when, when they crash land. You know? Let's talk this out, though, real quick. Okay. Let's talk this out real <laughs> okay, quick. Let's do it. Let's do it. I dare you. We're living in an age where you go to the grocery store. And now there's hella self checkout, and there's very little employees. True. So we got this gigantic <laughs> spaceship, and we got Mother that is running the show. She is. And there's a couple, couple people left who are just holding on to their paycheck. Maybe they've been in the company for a long time. They're not young. That's so, true. That's true. So, so that's that's gonna be my excuse for this. You know, <laughs> like Mother could certainly run this mission on its own. She's trusted to do so. Uh, but you know what? There's already an Ash is an alien. I mean, sorry, is a robot, obviously. So that even eliminates one mm-hmm. more person. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, these are people who are just grandfathered into the company. Um, they're a they're couple union years probably guys. from. Yeah, they're union guys. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're, like, so. They're grandfathered uh, in, like you said. They're yeah. making that paycheck. This okay. is my contract. Uh, you're not getting rid of me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so I mean, if that's how it is right now, when you go to fucking Vons, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And everything's self-checkout. Yeah. Uh, imagine this far into the future. Uh, we're lucky that uh, humans can do anything. Yeah. You know, you're right. You're right. I also forgot. I think this coincides with the, uh, what's that movie? Wally with like the Pixar Wally timeline. So all the other mm. humans are, you know, 600 pounds and their bones have like receded and stuff. So <laughs> these are the last fighting few. So, okay. All right. You won me over. You, you won that one. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Andy, what do you got, dude? What do you got? Dude, just, I was going to go along kind of with what you were saying. Just the vastness of this giant ship. Yeah. The first five, seven minutes of this movie, you don't see a soul. It's just. <laughs> empty space and just showing these great sets it looks fantastic but it's just ominous sounds and yeah yeah nothing and just beeps and boops and now everyone's just waking up just from a nice little nap you know yeah let's we're, we're ready we're ready to start the day we're home baby <laughs> yeah this is yeah. the first movie i'd ever seen depicting waking up from hypersleep Oh, yeah. 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 You know, and Mm -hmm. like, I feel like that then became a thing in several movies going forward where it's like Mm -hmm. now we're we're all 
expecting the like waking up feeling crazy needing to get you know like cord yeah. whatever yeah uh so i just want to mention that that's that's just the thing that uh that definitely i think i think um became a cemented thing in all space travel movies going forward absolutely yeah yeah absolutely I, yeah i think if we're uh, gonna get to uh another planet or something they're gonna that's how we're gonna have to do it we're gonna have to hypersleep get us yeah. get us there and then wake us up there's no other way Right. Yeah. yeah, like Han Solo wait, coming out of the carbonite. It's like George Lucas is showing everybody, like, okay, this is what they did in 79 <laughs> on the Nostromo. <laughs> you know, that's, what, that's what you got to do there. Come on, Indy. You can do it. Just be groggy and kind of blind for a little while. You'll be fine. <laughs> uh, dude, Kane finding leathery eggs. That That should have been mm. the move to get everybody just out you know just everyone in their right mind is just like hey this the spaceship i'm on board that's cool let's go explore we heard a distress distress call this looks like unlike anything i've ever seen they get inside whoa what's this giant crazy s&m skeleton with like a <laughs> gun growing out of its dong like what is this thing i don't know it's some space thing I don't, who knows we're in this room there's a ton of leathery eggs and there's movement Get out! What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like that every time. I'm just like, you know. I mean, yeah. Then the movie ends and and there's no fun. But who in their right mind is going into a chamber with a bunch of like leathery eggs? Any eggs? You just be like, no. all right, I'm out. Something laid those eggs. You know. <laughs> it's like Ash. You really want to get these eggs? Take your robot ass in there. You know, there's yeah. something off about you. Yeah. Go in there, dude. <laughs> Uh, I hadn't, it was, it was a really cool thing where like, I hadn't watched alien in a long time, um, around the release of Prometheus. Uh-huh. And then after watching Prometheus, I think I saw it like twice in the theater, I rewatched alien. And then I was I, like, I, I just felt like I was like, I was like, Oh my God, I completely forgot that. Like, this is the same room. And like, that is the, yeah. like the, the way that's yeah. tied together. Um, and that was just like a really, you know, exciting thing to see is like oh we are really right back here and that's the room and oh my god like this is now yeah. so much more exciting i thought that was just like such a great way to tie those movies together um, for sure for sure but uh but yeah i mean i'm trying you know again i'm, I'm gonna play devil's advocate you're okay. sent there on a distress you're sent there on a distress signal you don't know what's going on you're trying to figure it out and you're like what the fuck is all you know what is all this i'm with you i would be out pretty quickly right but but also, you know, maybe you're you need some excitement in your life. You know, maybe you, maybe you're excited to have, make first contact. I don't know. You maybe. know, um, maybe but it, cer- it certainly didn't go well. Yeah, no, <laughs> I think we can all agree there. There's no argument that it wasn't the best decision. You know? No, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I would just I would close the door. I'd be like, we're still investigating the, the distress call for sure. I'm just going to walk. I'm going to back out of this room. I'm going to close the giant skeleton dong doors or whatever is on this thing, closing it up, and I'm just going to go in a different room. That's that's my move. That's I'm going to look for the distress in the other room. You also, you're wearing a big old, you know, spacesuit and everything. Last thing on your mind is that somebody's going to bust through this thing and get my face. Yeah. You know? You're that like, true. nah, I'm yeah. safe. Yeah. I got this helmet on. <laughs> that's why you make helmets. I, I guess you're right, Andy. I mean, we need to have an astronaut on the podcast to ask, like, hey, do you ever freak out that, like, a space rock is going to crack that thing and your brain's going to explode? You know, like, I would be I would be afraid of that all the time, but that's also why I'm not an astronaut. It's, <laughs> it's the only reason. I passed all the NASA reason. tests. <laughs> the yeah. only reason. Yeah. Yeah, I, I went to JPL as my university. That's where I went, and I passed all the tests. It was great. They were like, all right, Gabe, it's your time. Let's go up in space. I'm like, there's fucking space rocks up there. I'm not doing that. I'll just, uh, I'll lead from down below. <laughs> I remember Dude. reading, I remember reading about, uh, like the special effects aspect of it. Now it's like, I can't unsee it. Like when, uh-huh. when the egg o- or when the egg opens and mm-hmm. like, apparently there's like a, it's like they used a chicken. Um, like they laid a chicken on it, uh, like in there or whatever. So when it's like pulse, like pulsating, it's yeah. Apparently, they just they had they put something on top of it, and then that that it's movement is it's a chicken. Yeah, which oh. is 
I did not really, know that. No. Yeah, it's it's uh, so every time I watch it, I'm always just like, man, that's crazy. Like that's what they came up with to like make this thing look alive. Yeah, you know, is the '70s, baby. <laughs> yeah, there's like, that um, there's that TikTok meme of everything of um, people watching Lord of the Rings where Aragorn kicks the helmet and it's people like trying to bite their tongue, like not telling everybody that he broke his foot. Viggo Mortensen broke his foot in that scene. Uh-huh. I'm gonna remake that. But with the egg and being like, try not to tell people it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it's chicken. It's, it's this chicken. is going viral. You know, viral. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, the face hugger. Yeah. Dude, when you see that thing, even today, you know, we have, you know, CGI and special effects and Thanos is flipping Ant-Man off the, the top of the building or whatever. That face hugger, though, man, it looks so badass and the way just once again practical effects i don't know what it is we found out something's a chicken maybe this is a phone cord or whatever but that thing wrapping around his neck looks so damn good man it looks so creepy it's it's awesome i mean the the work that the artisans put into this movie it shows and it's shockingly still holds up 1979 you know that you can count on one hand the movies in 1979 that still look amazing that have effects obviously you know just there's there's regular films that still look great because shooting on film looks great but (laughs) but the actual effects to still hold up and to be that impressive and scary and that was the other thing dude holy shit on the rewatch with this you know yeah jeremy i've I've seen the movie a a million times too it's still scary you know what's coming Mm -hmm. you know what it is but like devote some of your attention to this film and like it blows you away and that's one of those yeah. scenes where it's like you know the face hugger's coming you know it's gonna get him but for some reason i'm like maybe this time his helmet's gonna do the thing and protect him you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and like the sound effects that the whole thing makes when it like wraps around the neck and all that sort of yeah. stuff even yeah. though it kind of like the fully for it is kind of like karate sounds it's like yeah. wow, 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 wow. it is <laughs> kind of a thing <laughs> but uh yeah it's it's awesome it's it so looks, sick it looks so good yeah good good call on that one andy yeah i mean that I, I had a note too about like the membrane inside the egg when the egg opens up like the membrane and the different colors around the the rim like they look so real it looks so i mean it's otherworldly it's alien yeah but i'm like that's real that's someone didn't make that that's a real alien egg get out of there you know i guess that's why i'm so nervous and i insist they need to get the hell out of that room um you know i'm not really political very often but when ripley goes break quarantine we could all die i just thought why didn't fauci say that (laughs) that's all he had to do that's all he had to do to get everyone on board i'm I'm just saying you know whether you are uh, you know side with the guy or not i think we can all agree that if he was wearing a jonesy t-shirt and got up and said hey everybody break quarantine we all die so i'm just quoting sigourney weaver here everyone would have been like ah alien he's good you know, <laughs> you know i'm what? on board hindsight is 2020 that's what they should have done you sigourney yeah. weaver people would have believed her like yeah let's do this yeah protect some fucking people <laughs> right just right stay in the quarantine anyone Fuck, anyone against it is an evil robot i mean the the, the <laughs> film proved it decades ago come on (laughs) (laughs) i just saw that and i was like oh yeah (laughs) that that would have been fun also again that ends the movie if you if you listen to sigourney weaver who was totally right a hundred percent oh yeah the movie's done you know it's interesting rewatching and again rewatching prometheus and being like oh this is you're doing the thing where you just you're making the same movie again where it's Mm -hmm. it's Charlize theron has the thing where she's like you're not like you're not coming on the ship with or he's not coming on the show it's like the same scene you yeah know what i'm yeah, saying it's yeah, like it's yeah, it, yeah. it's uh it you know people complain that uh that start that force awakens or whatever was like a new hope just like reshot oh, yeah. basically where it's like yeah, yeah alien and prometheus kind of has a lot of the same a lot of the same games going on too it's right. fine <laughs> it's a good game but but yeah it's it's a good time and uh Pr- prometheus was also one of those things like i think where prometheus makes alien better on the rewatch. It's like watch oh, yeah. Prometheus and you watch alien and you go, yeah, exactly. I mean, you said it perfectly a second ago, dude, like 
it just it makes that room with the eggs so much cooler it makes like you know the i forget what his name is but like you know the giant guy with the yeah. gun like the traveler or whatever the i forget the name that he's he's got a name that that alien thing they find but uh, uh chris yeah his name's chris <laughs> his name's <laughs> oh, brian it was right there yeah. oh my god what the fuck is yeah. it called oh i blew it, it sorry right there. sorry jeremy it was right I, there I, blame uh, me I, I... <laughs> no it's fine oh yeah. it's gonna drive me crazy uh the architect is an architect or the yeah now you're gonna have to go to google My... <laughs> i opened a can of worms yeah i i is it is it the architect because well, the engineers like the engineer. engineers thank you right google there. Was, oh it's close i was close there you have it. yeah you were, were you were closer than me the traveler <laughs> or chris yeah, or Chris. I think that was his name, though. That was his actual Chris. name. Yeah, his yeah, his Chris title might have been the engineer, but his name was Chris. <laughs> uh, Chris and also, I mean, also just the the sh- you know, like the the U shaped ship, like seeing that in Prometheus and seeing it, you know, it's like, oh yeah, oh my god, it's all the, it's yeah, it's just thrilling. It's truly yeah. thrilling. You it know, is. it is so good. It was such a fun ride too. Um, everyone blood. knew everyone knew Kane was dead. Like, like there was no bringing him in. Like everyone knew just because of space, like dude's helmets compromised. He's got an alien on his face. He's dead. There's no, there's no bringing him in. I don't know. I'm again, I'm, I'm being a, uh, I'm being a spoil sport. Like it's just, I'm a party. You're, pooper. you're, you're put in a tough situation though, because it's like, are you going to be the guy that says, let's just leave him out here. You know what I'm saying? Like it I just would. becomes, I would. <laughs> I gotta get home. I gotta get to my future hungry man dinner. My microwave yeah. is calling. I gotta do it. I just gotta, gotta get, get my your, shares. You, you know? gotta get your union guys home. They have that paycheck. They didn't sign up for this. They didn't sign up get for this. Get them paid. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're you're certainly not wrong. I would just. I'd probably be. I'd be the coward, just being quiet, just like I'll let these guys make a fucking decision on this. I'm, this sucks. This sucks. Yeah, it, it does suck. It's a rough yeah. situation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Andy, but it was pumping the oxygen um it was pumping the oxygen into him dude right it was it was giving him it was, oxygen it was giving him oxygen yeah which then gets us to acid blood just mm-hmm. yeah one of the details like that one of the coolest one of the coolest defense mechanisms weapons whatever you want to call it yeah in any movie acid ever blood acid blood yeah <laughs> it burns through the like the entire ship yeah, and you're like, that's insane. If yeah. you blow up one of these things, it's I'm done. So yeah, yeah, you're done. The person you're trying to save is done, and your the ship spaceship's done. Is done. Yeah, it's it's gnarly. Yeah, a drop corrodes. It goes in like what three levels or something like that. Yeah. Like a drop. You know, it's wild. Is that in this one or is that in Aliens where it does the thing where it goes level to level to level? Is that in this, this one? one? That's this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, where they're they running down. Go down. Yeah, they're just yeah. like, how the fuck is it still going? Yeah. Yeah, so they're afraid it's, it's going to just, just go drop. right through yeah. the ship. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, that's such an awesome thing. That whole scene is gnarly, but also insane to me because they're like, everyone is so just just calm. You know, they're like, we're going to do it. And I get that. You got to be a professional and you got to do your thing. But like, no hazmat suits, no mask. Oh, like, yeah. They have, they have their little like oxygen breather things over their nose, but they're like, dude, no, not no nothing. You're not even wearing gloves. Like it's an alien on the dude's face choking him <laughs> out. Acid blood, all this. They go back in. Nobody's yeah. wearing a, a hazmat suit. It's like, come on, dude. I get that mother runs the show, but like if you're the last six humans, you know that are doing this thing, like, man, protect your neck, baby. Like, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> Literally. But Gabe, that also then leads to when uh, Kane wakes up, <laughs> and he's, you know, oh, I'm hungry. But right before him, they're like, we need to freeze him, put him in quarantine. Oh, he's awake. Let's all grab food together. Let's all sit in the same room with this guy. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's totally cool. He's fine. Look, he's back to his old self. He's making jokes and talking about can't wait to get home and. Of course yeah. he's hungry. The guy had he hasn't been able to eat or drink for like whatever seventy two hours. Give him a he had cigarette. an alien on his face. Yeah, he's get sick. The, Someone give him a cigarette. Yeah, he's not feeling well. <laughs> he needs a smoke. This guy needs a Virginia Slim immediately. <laughs> I lo- I don't know if you guys uh, read anything about that. 
that scene, but like how uh, they all didn't know what was going to mm-hmm. happen. Yeah. And yeah. like, it, like they kept that as, you know, so like the look of they're all horrified, like how horrified they all are by it. Like what, that's just like great filmmaking, you know? It's, Dude, it's, I, it's such an awesome Ridley Scott move. Like he doesn't tell his actors thing. He did that on Gladiator too. But go ahead, Andy. Oh yeah, I I, lo- I love that where you just catch the 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 real reaction and it's mm. oh it's fantastic. They did that on what uh, Goonies as well with the pirate ship. You know, oh, the yeah. first time the, the kids the see kids the pirate didn't ship. Know, yeah. Boom! Oh wow! Catch the real reaction. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Every time, yeah. They, yeah. When you're seeing them see it, that was them seeing it for the first time, and they're just like little kids being blown away by a giant pirate ship. Like, yeah. yeah. Super oh, cool. Man. Well, that's adorable. Yeah, it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> did did the Goonies make the cut or no? You were like, I don't have time for this shit either. I saw the Lost Boys first. <laughs> <laughs> Lost Boys was in regular rotation in my house. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. like like uh, I thought Goonies was fun. You know, like mm-hmm. I was more. I thought it was. I think it comes down to I always I love a hangout movie. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like a, like a group of friends hanging out. Mm-hmm. going on an adventure like yeah. that's a sign me up you yeah. know like that's that's fun so i think i i think i did like it um but i didn't there are people that like lived and died yeah right by the by goonies you know yeah um right. i also think i i connected more with like stand by me too you yeah. know which was like a darker hangout movie yeah. you know <laughs> kind of a situation yeah, right. and yeah. Kiefer sutherland so <laughs> you're good yeah i, I have a I, I have a, a brand apparently yeah, the through totally. line. Well, exactly. we know we, you know, listen. Both Andy and I have interpreted the lyrics to many a song where you're just you're just in real time telling episodes of Twenty Four with Kiefer Sutherland. Don't think we didn't <laughs> notice, dude. We totally got it. You know, where you're just like Kiefer Sutherland's bitching. I gotta figure out a way to talk about my favorite show, Twenty Four, with my band, but I can't make it obvious. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have an entire. I mean, yo, uh, how oh, do you guys shoot. feel? How do you, how do you guys feel about Dark City? <laughs> Dark City's oh, great. <laughs> yeah, it's actually underrated. rad. Underrated. Yeah, underrated. it's so good. It's so underrated. good. Underrated. It's underrated. so fun. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a that's a deep cut movie that doesn't get the 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 love it deserves. You know, no. yeah, we're it does get into the weeds. Yeah, got Keith, got Kiefer Sutherland. Yo, yeah, that's where that's where I bought all my stock. When I, I mean, yeah. I liked him in The Lost Boys, but when I saw Dark City, I said, "I'll forgive you for anything bad you do." Yeah, <laughs> that I feels went, like that's a movie that should be like it should blow up again. Like I feel like if people can shit their pants over Kate Bush, like people should be watching Dark City again and going like, "Where? How don't we know about this?" Like, yeah, it's, it's a rad story, amazing effects, like super cool. Like, yeah, that's. That is a deep cut. I haven't seen that in years. Like, way to, yeah, way to bring that up, dude. It's basically <laughs> yeah. like it's uh, it's got elements of Inception. It's like yeah. a lot of it's like very similar to Inception, but mm-hmm. uh, the goth version of it, where all goth. the bad guys kind of look like Billy Corgan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very very Matrixy, like straight for up. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I think it's same director as The Crow. I want to say that sounds awesome. right. It's I been think that's forever. What, I think that's what made me see it when I was a kid. I was like, "Fucking guy from The Crow." <laughs> this is gonna be sick. <laughs> My little goth ass. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just so everybody's super clear, though, li- limelight is about twenty four, right? It's true. Okay, there it's we go. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, Andy. We were talking about the hangout. Everybody's cool, just hanging with Kane, just like old times. He takes one bite of. Whatever the shit that they're just space eating. Space noodles. He's eating what? Space noodles. Yeah, well, space noodles, but he also grabs like a big handful of parsley <laughs> to just like <laughs> chase his space noodles. And then, yeah, the chest burster scene. Um, the people are, the, the rest of the crew, they are pretty chill about it. They kind of, they kind of are. Like people freak out a little bit and they're scared. But once it happens and then <laughs> Alien straight up just runs away, they're like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty intense, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I the, the the reality of like what I'm feel the dread that I'm feeling in that moment, just as a casual observer of something that I know is a film, 
not yeah. real. I'm just like I'm more amped up and want to go find that thing and kill it or catch it, whatever. I just want to know where it is. Uh, it just I don't know. My intensity was so much higher than like what I'm reading on their faces. I guess Absolutely. was I the only one? <laughs> no, they yeah. they they just let it happen. Yeah, and they're like. <laughs> That was wild, right? You saw that? Yeah. Anyway, that pass was... me more cilantro. I need a lot more <laughs> with these space noodles. There's blood everywhere. <laughs> it's funny. That's the scene, too, where the the wheels for the movie could have come off right there. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And, like, yeah. of all the scenes in, in this movie, that's kind of the one, like, when you see it and then yeah. it, how it runs. Yeah. Kind, it's like the probably part, <laughs> yeah. probably the part that has aged the worst. Like that's yeah. the part that kind of looks the silliest. Yeah, but it's still they they recover. Let's just yeah. say yeah. that you know, like we don't do. spend time with it looking like that at all. You know no. what I'm right. saying? Like we move on from that pretty quickly. And yeah. God, God bless him for that choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we move from that to because a... if this movie was that the whole time as the bad guy, this movie doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That yeah. is true. If it look, yeah, it's like a 1980s vibrator is just like what this thing <laughs> looks like. You're just like, what is the, what is this Hitachi Power Wand doing? Like little silver teeth. It's, yeah, like, it's yeah. just it yeah. it it does not like, work. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just and, with which is, in. yeah, <laughs> which is amazing because xenomorphs apparently they they just feed off of oxygen and it, they just grow. Within seconds, and they fully, they just fully mature, and it's great. But no, but in all honesty, what follows that scene is just, yes, textbook, fantastic, slow, brooding, scary stuff. That's what it is. Yeah. You're just like around every corner. You're now remembering the shit you said, Andy. The first five minutes was showing the vastness of this vessel and how yep. they're all by themselves. And now you're like, well, now there's this thing that can rip out of people's chests. It could be hiding anywhere. And it's now we so got to go find it. Yeah. It's so and discover big. cats. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you, th- you know, they don't really explore this, but, like, you also, you know, they're obviously very, like, tempered in, like, how they approach finding this thing. But, like, they don't know. This thing might be friendly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, you don't, yeah. you genuinely don't, like, you don't, I mean, not friendly, like, you, but, like, who knows if it's, like, like a, a dog or a cat, right. truly. Yeah. Like, where yeah. it's, like, yeah. you don't know that this thing, and also... I think that's the biggest una- and unanswerable question when it comes to the f- alien franchise is how does this thing grow so fast? Yeah. You know, and like they yeah. really, 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 uh, you know, put the, put the pedal down to, to move the movies along where they're just yeah. like, it goes from this. And then the next time you see it, which will be in the next 10 minutes, right. It's bigger than you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. You know, I would have been cool. I mean, I, I guess it's, you know, it's it's a Monday morning quarterbacking this whole thing. So it's been out for a while. But that's that was one of my favorite parts of Prometheus was seeing like the blue, like juvenile or not juvenile. But I guess like the in in the middle stage of its evolution, I guess, you know, seeing the xenomorph that was like mm-hmm. blue and smoother. And I, I thought that was like one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. I thought that was so rad. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, I'm with you. You know. But it's okay. I guess we'll just have to settle for the, the amazing, <laughs> you yeah. know, Giger, uh, yeah. baddie, you know, the alien that we know and love today. Uh, and, but yeah. And as the next time you see him, it's you know, humanoid. You know, it's this 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 dude, in this in this suit with this giant long head. Once again, looks awesome. It looks it awesome as shit. It does. And once it again, it could have looked really really bad because it's you know. It's a guy. You can see yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look at, uh, if you guys ever seen what the original Predator was supposed to look like before. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, like, it could yeah. have been a disaster. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of people yeah. were making right, the right choices behind the scenes. I'm going to just give credit to Walter Hill. I don't know if it's him, but I'm just going to throw it out there because he's a producer <laughs> on this and he's he's got impeccable taste. Yeah. It's, it had to be. It had, it to, had be to be Walter. The Hillinator. Yeah. It had yeah. to be him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it is Wally's world, you know. Exactly. Yeah. We just live in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Andy, the the next thing I have, I, I because it's a lot of it's a lot of slow and dark. I mean, it's great. I'm yeah. not complaining about any of it, no, but I was so it, into it. My next note is is Ash. So, you know, do you have anything yeah. between this and when we get no, to Ash? Let's jump into Ash, man. Okay. Ash. So 
Ash, the scene where he's going full ape shit and just <laughs> spitting milk and gets his head <laughs> chopped destroyed. off. Destroyed. And exactly, just completely destroyed and then still keeps going after. It's That is the thing. And I guess, yeah, the the culmination leading up to, you know, the head and just covered in the white blood yeah. stuff. To me, it's almost like that scene and and that that image that screen grab is like as iconic and scary and gnarly and weird as anything in the movie like i i mm-hmm. feel like that was done so well which is funny that you were talking about the foley of the face hugger dude because the foley for that scene is actually kind of silly but uh, it it re- it's a lot of like bleh, <laughs> it's like uh-huh. really silly yeah. sounds but yeah. holy shit is that scene so effective it just blows it away but what, what makes it work is like it's so fucking loud where it's yes. like yeah. Yeah. it's like we're just yeah. like oh my god uh it's startling yeah. it's super yeah. startling it i don't is. know if it, are you are there of you guys uh and i'm saying this and i'm not really that much but like are you guys video game guys at all not in a big way. It's okay dude. if you're not. Yeah. It's it's yeah. all I'm gonna bring up is like, did you guys ever see or like happen to play the Alien Isolation game? Yes. Do you know anything about it? Okay. Yeah. Yes. It is. I, our, tr- our friend played it quite a bit, and I it's was over at his house a few times. Fucking terrifying. It's yeah. a fucking terrifying game to play. Like yeah. it's it's dude. like I've never I had never really been like I'd had plenty of people tell me like video <laughs> games can be scary, and I always be like. Sure, I believe you. Fine, but like when I played that, I was like, Jesus Christ, because you just <laughs> it, it. They do such a great job of like putting you as like literally like you're on the Nostromo, where at no like there's the same thing never happens again. So like you're yeah. constantly being hunted by this thing, and you never know when it's gonna come at you. Yeah. All you hear is all of a sudden just like a, and it just runs Whoa. up and kills you. You're done. Like you just yeah, you just get and the fucking controller shakes and shit um <laughs> but like uh but yes it's just yeah. like it's so effective and like and a big part of the game though is like the the ash type uh alien care or uh, robot characters that are also out to get you the whole time and it's like yeah. it's just such it's great i mean like again that's another thing that could could have not worked in this movie yes. but it, it completely works you know like yeah. it just adds more to the isolated feeling and this whole like i don't know now who i can trust at all you know yeah yeah it's it's so interesting you know andy you said the thing earlier and it's like this movie it's absolutely on par with it and they're so similar i mean they're so incredibly different and unique in their own ways but it's like yeah you ha- you have this unknown threat with the alien you it, it can be it could be anywhere you've we've seen it take what three shapes who knows what else it could be you know at the time you're like i don't know what is is that giant version gonna become something else in another you know 10 minutes like what else is it gonna be um but then yeah you have with with ash it's such an amazing move and so effectively done like you then look at everyone else on the crew and you're like okay well who else is the plant like it's got it's got to be something else like Who's going, you know, we need to test everybody's yeah. blood with some exposed wires. That's what we got to do right now. You know? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> it, it, it's so it's good. It's just an, another thing, yeah. I Then here's where I just fell off the cliff because I was so on board. I'm just like, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm i fine jumping right to Sigourney Weaver at the yeah, end. I, that, that's honestly, <laughs> I actually just have uh, the note where the explosion happens because I, once again just watch the movie now yeah. and I stopped taking notes. I want to make sure we shout out that when she, you know, like when she goes into that control room and thinks that maybe she's good. Yeah. And how they hide the alien mm-hmm. and then have it like yeah. all of a sudden uncurl and come out. Cause it's just like, they've done such a great job of the set design to where like everything already yeah. kind of looks like cords and wires and like, you know, like just like this really dark and black, uh, le- to use the word leathery again, like everything yeah. kind of looks like this. So yeah. you you're not paying attention to what the walls no. look like, and then to no. just to have it all of a sudden unfurl and have this have it be hiding in there is it that's that to me is the scariest part of the movie. Yeah, you're you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right, dude. I I needed to write that down as a note, but I couldn't. I was just way too <laughs> enthralled. Yeah, you know, 
That's the problem. A lot of times we do the rewatch and they're shit movies. They're just terrible movies, so I can write a million notes and make jokes and whatever, and it's fine. There's not a lot you can joke about with this movie because it's, it's yeah. per- damn near perfect. You know, it's so great. And you're right. That that scene is chilling, you know. So, I, I mean, everything Sigourney Weaver is doing after the halfway mark. I mean, mm-hmm. all eyes are on her. She's she's incredible. You're You're rooting for her. You know, it's like... I don't know what's going on on earth, but right now you're humanity's last hope, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. you, and we got to get that ship full of that delicious ore. we got to get that back because we need future microwaves and cell phones and other shit. I, I don't know <laughs> what, it, what they just <laughs> mind, but get us home. Sigourney Weaver. That's what we need. And yeah, just yeah. her, I, I would have the last, whatever, you know, 20 minutes of this movie, 15 minutes of this movie, I'd put it toe to toe with Jamie Lee Curtis and Michael Myers. Like I absolutely would. I, yeah. it's, it's awesome. And the action's huge and it's, I don't know. It's beautiful. She, she just did an awesome job and the explosions yeah, yeah. icing on the cake, dude. Yeah. The whole, the, the, the plant, the like knocking at the airlock, like all that sort of stuff. Like, it's just like, it's a, uh, it, it, anytime you are watching a movie and it makes you think like, well, what would I do in that situation? It, it just, just becomes really fun. And then you're just like, you're, you're on the edge of your seat, not knowing what that move is actually going to be. And then what oh, yeah. ends up being that it also leads you to be like, can aliens breathe in space? Right. <laughs> like, like yeah. is, yeah. is this going to be okay? You know, like, uh, it, I don't know. It's, Dude. it's, it's just so, it's so effective. It's so effective. Her just it, slowly getting into like the spacesuit too, and just like the I tension love that. just keeps building, keeps mm-hmm. building until she hits that button, mm-hmm. throws that thing out there, yeah, yeah, and then just fires off those jets and crisps it up, baby, <laughs> cook up that alien nice and just nice de- and delicious, just yeah. delicious with the Colonel's recipe, all that. It's just right. You gotta in there. fry that up on that jet propulsion you gotta engine, do it, baby, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- it's not crazy to think the alien would be just fine because it's like, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's indestructible, uh, basically. Yeah, I mean, the, the they're talking about the atmosphere of you know the the planet they land on, you know, where they find the leathery eggs and yeah. everything. And it's like, oh yeah, it's pretty neat. It's you know, pure ammonia and whatever. I mean, it just they they're rattling off you know every dangerous thing, thing. that exists. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, this is pretty much what the atmosphere is there. And then on the ship, it's oxygen because they're humans, you know, and the alien does just fine in that, too. So, yeah, it's like, why wouldn't it be fine in the infinite vacuum of space? Sure. Great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for it'll real. Be okay. <laughs> <coughs> I want to make sure that we get that. I that, w- that we add this one extra shout for this film. OK, which is uh, which is uh, the score. Oh, uh, yes. Jerry, Jerry Goldsmith, mm-hmm. Jerry Goldsmith uh, doing the score for this. I uh, pulled pulled out the uh just so I, <gasps> I had it in front of me the uh this is original press of of the uh oh, the oh yes uh and you just look at this man's you just look at this man's uh filmography i mean it's yeah. stacked as hell but like yeah. you get into the eight like late 70s 80s it is just absurd i mean the fact that uh within just a couple years he obviously does alien then he does poltergeist He's got, uh, he's got first blood. Yeah. Uh, he's got first a uh, Rambo first blood part two. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, uh, I just noticed this right now. He literally did extreme prejudice as I mentioned earlier. <laughs> well, of course. Uh, yeah. him. And- <laughs> but I mean like, yo, the burbs total recall, yeah, the, uh, the gremlins movies. Like, I mean, he's just, he is a genre master, you know, yeah. like, uh, Everything sounds different that he does. You, there's a lot of people that you could point to and be like, oh, he's doing this such and such thing. But like, right, right. I don't know. He gives such character to these films and uh, with such like a symphony, the, you know, um, with so much horror, a lot of the stuff, especially of that era is like very synth driven and or, yeah. yes. or, or going another direction, like, you know, like Goblin doing like Suspiria. Like it's like very like, like, like a um, atmospheric and. Well, uh, or I was gonna say like jam bandy, you know, like like you look mm. at like the Don- like Day of the Dead and Dawn of the Dead, like all yeah. of that sort of stuff. Like it's very yeah. like acid rocky sort of stuff. Yeah, um, true. But then, yeah, Jerry Goldsmith gives this like, like really orchestral, like big like 
it, it just it's so different than um anything i'd seen in, or heard in a horror movie before you know like mm-hmm. it it i think it just like adds uh, like gravitas to it to where it's like it seems yeah. a lot more respectable because it's like this huge symphony behind this film um yeah. which is like yeah it's something you don't often get in a horror movie yeah you know <laughs> thank you for John that carpenter out. sitting at his keyboard mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> begrudgingly making it because no one else would yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> like, i guess i'll do it fine yeah. whatever just just because it's always fun to sort of do i want to ask you guys if you had to rank the alien movies Okay. We can cut out. I, I mean, well, fuck it. Well, let's just include alien, the Alien vs. Predator movie. We, then we know they're at the bottom. But like. <laughs> okay, then yeah. Alien vs. Predator. Then yeah. Alien vs. Predator 2. Yeah, of course. Number one. I'm number with two you. with the bullet. I'm with, yeah, I'm with, I'm with you so far. Oh, <laughs> now where are we going to go? You know what? I haven't seen. What, what's the newest one? Is it. Covenant? There was the one. Yeah, I haven't seen Covenant yet. So I oh, don't know where to good. put Covenant. It's oh, good. Okay, so that that one's hard for me to even remotely place. Sure. Yeah. Hmm. I off what I've seen then, I would probably go oh, Aliens th- Alien 3 here? Alien 3 is number 1? No, no, near the near the bottom if I'm going last. Oh, you're going uh, from the worst to best. Worst to best. Okay. I would love if it was the other way around and you put Alien versus Predator number one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the joke. I thought that's what oh, you okay, were doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Alien 3. Um, I'm going to go Alien Resurrection. Uh, Prometheus, Prometheus, Alien, Aliens. Aliens Fair. number one. Fair. Aliens number one. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be... Uh, similar in there i'm gonna i'm gonna do it the other way because i can't i can't do it backwards i don't i gotta go with like my favorite so my my favorite is is alien the one we just talked about um it's it's got to be alien because i love horror i just really do and i think this is such a good horror film um and then i gotta go yeah aliens uh and then because of its special place in my heart i'm actually gonna go resurrection Uh, i know there's a lot of bad stuff but I, i don't know man and I got You're to talk to basketball. You know, I I'm, to, I'm amazed at the, the, the love that Resurrection is getting on this podcast. It's it's only because like, I know it's not good. I I, I think it's it's not great. But <laughs> having it be the first one that I saw and I I just you know when the aliens like a, a like a human and like wants to be held and cuddled by <laughs> Sigourney <laughs> Weaver and I just think it's ridiculous and great and I just I'm a fan of nonsense and I don't know yeah. it ticks a lot of boxes for me. So I'm going to go with that guy, and then Alien 3 is right behind that. No, 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 I'm sorry, because I'm forgetting Prometheus. Uh, Alien, Aliens, Prometheus, Resurrection, Alien 3, and then um, I I saw Covenant. Um, I didn't see Covenant in the best mindset, I will say that. I was exhausted. Okay. I had just come home from being on the road for a really long time, and I went out with some friends um, and we saw it, and I, I definitely slept through a lot of it. So uh, I have not both, seen it since. You, both of you got homework. Turn, I know, I know, I know. I felt okay. so bad. Fire but I got, I got to see it. I got to yeah. see it, especially if yeah. you're talking it up, dude. I got to see yeah. it. It's, Heck it's yeah. got some really good set pieces. It's, okay. it, uh, some, some fun actors in it too that I, okay. that I ride hard for. Okay. Uh, How about you? Give us your ranking yeah. with, with, with Mr. Alien himself being what? the, the, I'm gonna the go, champion. Yeah. I'm going to go Alien, Aliens, Prometheus, Alien 3. I love Alien 3. I really do. I really do. I think it's fantastic. I think it's underrated. Uh, Mm. Alien Covenant, Alien Resurrection, uh, Alien vs. Predator Requiem, which is part two, and then... And then Alien vs. Predator. I think that's that's going to be my order. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But no, it's fun. It's like there's certain there's bands that it's fun to do this with, and there's there's uh, you know huge franchises that it's fun to do this with. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, Yeah. it's got to be a new addition to the podcast, man. So there you go. Rank your yeah. Rank the franchise. (laughs) It's tough though because there's so many. I mean, there's also franchises that have so many fucking movies that are like just you know so many of them are almost unwatchable. Yeah, Uh, yeah, exactly. I think we tried to do it with Jason, 
right, Andy? Like we I think we, we talked about those. Jason, That's yeah. tough. There's That's... so many that are just garbage. Just yeah. Garbage. What the best one is? What number four? Y- what, yes. That, yeah. Jer- yes. Yes. Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. The best one's like number yeah. four. Mm. We're and... just leaning into Jason being Jason. You know, yeah. it's great. Yeah. Yeah. But there's like that one where it's like not even Jason. It's like a camp counselor. So it's like a yep. disaster. It's, a, <laughs> it's a awful. It's, it's yeah. There's Jason. more bad it's ones than dude. good ones, yeah. in my opinion. And then like uh, Jason takes Manhattan where you're like the, worst of the whole the whole thing is on the boat. You We really don't get much, much Jason in Manhattan at all. Yeah. They couldn't afford it. They couldn't afford it. They have the one shot. Yeah. Oh my god, that's a disaster. Yeah. I, that was a, that's one of those movies that I remember as a kid at the at like Blockbuster that would always stand out to me where I'd be like, oh fuck, that one's got to be crazy. Yeah. He's just slashing people in Manhattan. Yeah. Oh my god. There's people left oh, and right. On a boat. He's just yeah. Crystal it, Lakes connected to New York. This is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like I feel like Predators, like the Predator franchise, is a fun one to rank too. I don't know if you guys have kept up and watched all of those yeah but yeah, yeah i some... have and they're fantastic yeah. es- es- especially prey. i gotta i gotta, gotta catch up one. I, yeah i haven't seen prey yet the you know oh. I, I have some time at here in the hotel maybe yeah. i'll throw that dude on. you have to I, you'll, good. Yeah. you'll enjoy it you'll enjoy it yeah all right. i i ride hard for predators uh the, oh, yeah. the robert rodriguez movie uh-huh. i, I yeah. feel like that doesn't get the respect With, uh, it deserves. adrian brody yeah, looking fucking yeah, swole as hell. Yeah, fucking yeah. swole as hell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm talking your guys ear off. I know this went over than you expected. So <laughs> no, this is great, this dude. This is dude, fantastic. This. Yeah, but um, we, Andy. I mean, we have a question for Jeremy. We yeah. talked about this movie, so, but now we got to know. Yeah, um, me and Gabe are both parents, um, and we always ask, you know, at the end, if you had kids, or if if you ever want to have kids, or if you're just around a kid. Would you let them watch this? Fuck yeah, I would. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> What's the age? What's the age? Yeah. What's the acceptable age? <sighs> Five years old. <laughs> yeah. See, the thing is, is like, I, I do think that it helps having at least a brain uh, able to recognize mm. what's happening in the movie. Whereas like this movie is kind of dense for long periods of it. I feel like, I feel like I'd show this to like an eight-year-old. Yeah, I feel like eight feels like a pretty a pretty good year. <laughs> but uh, I it's like I just ran into a friend who's a mother of two. I hadn't seen it since she's had ch- children. Ran into her at her show. And we were catching up, and you know, I was just like asking questions because I don't know anything because I'm not a parent. But I'm just like. Like so, like are your kids like hella into like the the Avengers movie, like into like Marvel and stuff? Because yeah. like she has two boys, yeah. and I think they're you know under. I think they're like around five and seven or something or four okay. and seven or something. Yeah. And she's like, I don't let them watch that stuff. And I'm just like, like it's too and it's intense. Too, and it, yeah. Like maybe trying like maybe too much for them or oh, something like that. Yeah. And I have like, I have a few friends that are dads that are, that are also kind of like seem tempered on wanting to let their kids watch like, act, like action stuff. And, and to me, I'm just like, because I was just so in love with that stuff as a kid, I'm like, yeah, I would be excited to show my kid all this fucked up stuff. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What are what about you two? What are, how old for your kids? You guys are actually parents. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was probably going to say the same thing. I, I, my kid, I'm going to sit him down and watch all these movies and probably about eight years old. I'm thinking it is, is, is money. <laughs> what, about you? what about you? Uh, so mine are super sensitive. Um, I, I've, started showing i've my my girl's 10 uh my boys are little still but like the 10 year old can pretty much start watching anything now so like alien i know she wouldn't be into it like she she likes the fantasy stuff like she is like way too much my my little clone and uh not my doing by the way too i tried to shelter her uh, from so so much of my (laughs) bullshit but she's just yeah she she digs the fantasy stuff like crazy she wants to watch puppets all day like gnarly weird puppet things she's into it so i would absolutely show her this i'd be fine and i'll deal with you know i'll get some nightmares and and it's okay it's part of being a kid but yeah i'm i'm fine with it my boys i think they could handle it once they turn 8 they're 6 right now so it's like i th- i think they could handle it once they turn 8 but I don't know. Just I think by virtue of like when I show the other one, they'll all probably watch it between like nine and eleven, somewhere in there. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, there is also that magical thing about like that. Certainly, probably we like you know we experience where like finding it on your own right. too right. is kind of True. it's kind of fun. But also, it's like I don't know how you know you guys are parents. I don't know how kids are. Like, are kids interested in going back and watching an older movie? Is that something that interests kids? Mine are because we show them old yeah. stuff all the time, and we watch like old TV shows. Like they watch the Munsters and like Adam's Family and stuff. Because I, a lot of the stuff, I hate to sound like an old man, but it's like a lot of the stuff nowadays just fucking sucks. So like, we watch old movies and they dig them. And it's funny you said that, dude. Because in this age of streaming, I've caught my daughter so many times, like just finding like an old movie and like wanting to watch it. And uh, a couple of times, I've just you know like like she she I actually she watched Roger Rabbit the or she like found oh, like Roger Rabbit Roger the other Rabbit. day and I was like yeah, yeah go for it dude like I just I I let her secretly watch it in a room because I was like yeah I don't care like it's cool man <laughs> like I'm pretty sure yeah. she's already seen it I, I think I remember showing her that but but yeah I, I love that I you know I kind of want a, as long as it's not x-rated you know just because I don't think she could handle that right now but I, sure. I just think like <laughs> go for it, dude. Like find fun stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I I would have I would be really anxious to like not want to be too like obviously I have like a fucking wall of records behind me. Like I would, I know I'd be like fuck you gotta like a yeah. three year, three year old being like you should really know the ins and outs of Sunday Day Real Estate where it's like <laughs> yeah this kid is gonna rebel against everything that I like yeah and listen to shit that will fucking make me want to take a long walk off a short pier so like you know i wrote man yeah i i would have a really hard time like policing myself from like wanting to push all of my shit onto yeah. the kid because yeah i mean i hated everything that my parents listened to and were interested in and then when you get older you come around and you're like oh, oh. actually i really like all that stuff yeah you know yeah aside from elvis elvis can still get bent yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's I like, maybe the one thing that didn't work. I like one song. <laughs> You're the devil in disguise. That's it. Okay. Yeah. I like one. I like one song too. It's the uh, Suspicious Minds. Oh yeah. Is that that? Yeah. Yeah. That, that song's. Song. Yeah. That's a good song. I'm into that's it. a good song. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That movie, on the other hand. <sighs> Come on, dude. Boz Lerman. Come Boz on, Lerman? man. <laughs> dude, that guy. That guy is. That guy is fucking visual poison. They, they need to take away his director's <laughs> card. They really do. <laughs> yeah, I, the biggest fights I've had this year have been about that film. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. Those are oh, people yeah. you need to cut out of your life, dude. <laughs> dude, I'm shocked by how many people are repping people this thing. People loved it. People like, are repping this thing. People so are wrong. Hard. People are wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So when does this when does this come out? This episode. Uh, this uh, this ep- go ahead, Andy. This one's gonna be. Uh, we're gonna aim for this one to be uh, the last week in October. Awesome. What is that? Yeah, this will be our Hall- usually release on Wednesday. Wednesday. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that that Wednesday. Uh-huh. So we'll keep you posted, brother. Um, this is the last thing we have are recommendations. You know, um, anything on your list? Obviously, we we know what we're gonna be recommending this week, uh, especially as you guys are about to go on tour. But you know, any any specific th- thing that you're listening to, watching, reading that you just want to mention here? Yeah. yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, well, yeah, if you have any interest in my band, uh, please check our tour dates because uh, when this airs, we will be about to start a full U.S. tour. Uh, we're supporting the Menzingers. Uh, they're doing a 10-year anniversary tour of On the Impossible Past, um, and then Screaming Females is also on that. So that's like the business side. Um, <laughs> and then... As far as stuff to watch, there's a lot of great movies coming out this year. I have a really good friend. I mentioned him earlier. His name's Mike. Um, that we go to a lot of early screenings. So there's a few movies coming out later this year that I'm excited to see again that we had the opportunity to, to catch uh, okay. that I think are great. Um, this movie called Empire, Empire of Light, which is really great. Uh, I don't know when this comes out, but Bones Bones and All, the new uh, oh uh, yeah Luca Luca movie. Yeah. Um, that it's, it's fucking awesome. It's incredible. Uh, I recommend seeing that. Um, I'll drop this here. I'm seeing it for the first time on Thursday, but there's that weird Al Yankovic, uh, biopic yeah. coming out. Yeah. 
uh, I got cast in it, so I'm in a couple scenes in that movie. Oh, rad! So, hey. Yeah, I haven't I haven't said that publicly at all, but when this airs, the, it'll be coming out I think a week later. Yeah. So, dude, um, that's amazing! You gave us so a that's, scoop. <laughs> so that's that's a scoop. So that's going to be a thing. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's kind of the excitement I think right now. Yeah, dude, that's oh man, that all oh, that's super exciting, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not a big role. I, I'm the guitar player in a fake punk band that's in two different scenes. He tries out for our band in one scene, and then uh, he comes to see us play in another scene. And Dude. Patton Oswalt heckles us. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty rad. It was the most oh. surreal experience of my fucking life. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool, man. Was the casting yeah. director a fan? or like? Uh, so the director... Um, the director of the film, I actually interviewed on my podcast, uh, like early on and cause he's a TV director. So like, Mm -hmm. I was really excited to talk to him Mm -hmm. about, you know, like he like walks us through, uh, what it was like to direct an episode of the office, for example. Like that's like a fun part of the show. He has a really interesting story. Like he, if you you guys are old enough to remember, uh, Andy Milanakis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andy Milanakis was like his, his, uh, his roommate in college. And then ended up uh, like develop, developing that show, and that was like how he got his start, whatever. So really cool thing. So uh, it got announced that he was doing the Weird Al Yankovic movie, and it was like a couple weeks later. He just messaged me and was like, "Are you available? <laughs> Are you available on these two days? And is your head still shaved?" Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, "I could be available. What's up?" And then gave me the scoop, and we, it was we filmed it back in like February. Uh-huh. It was seriously just such a surreal thing. The other members of my Dude. band in it are. Uh, uh, Jonah Ray, if you know who oh, Jonah yeah, Ray yeah, is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's the drummer, and then this comedian named Johnny Pemberton. Uh, he's the singer and bass player. So that's uh, great. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> that's a really. Awesome, man. I'm really nervous and excited to see it, but I, it just premiered at TIFF, um, the Toronto Film Festival, yeah. and I was admittedly narcissistically reading reviews to be like, because there's always I was apprehensive to tell anybody because there's always a chance that the scenes get cut. Yeah, and yeah. right, I just look like a dickhead being like i'm totally in this movie um <laughs> but and then i then i'm not um but i was skimming some reviews and one of the scenes gets mentioned and i was like oh, that so that's definitely in there yeah, and mean. then uh and then someone who went to see one of the screenings uh tweeted at me about it and i was like so i was uh, shameless and I DM to that person and ask them about it. I was like, oh, so are both scenes in it? <laughs> and they're very nice, very nice about it. So yeah, I'm, uh, they're showing it here in LA on Thursday. So oh. I'll, I'm hopefully getting into that to be very nervous watching that, but I'm excited and oh. it's a really exciting thing. Yeah. That is super rad. I cannot wait. My, my boys are the biggest Jeremy, weird Al fans ever. So yeah, I can't he, wait. He, he, uh, again, the whole story is crazy. I'll probably end up talking about it on, on something for at some point, but like, yeah, uh, fucking meeting him and the whole situation was like so surreal. He's such a nice guy, uh-huh. such a nice guy. Daniel Radcliffe, such a nice guy. Dude. Rain Wilson, like all these people, it was just like, what am I doing here? Yeah. I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, so and I look like an asshole in it. So strap in. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait. Oh, that is awesome. That is great. Uh, Andy. <sighs> What are you recommending? I'm I'm recommending everybody go see Touche Amore on on the Dude. tour. That's what I'm recommending. How about you, man? Oh, I'm good. Oh, uh, I'm recommending the first ever podcast. Uh, Jeremy's podcast comes out weekly. Um, he talks to artists, musicians, uh, people of all sorts about their experiences, their first experiences doing the things that they they love, and it's it's such a unique dialogue and conversation that he he does with all these people he's great at it he he, he's great at everything he's just he's a good dude and i recommend that listen to a couple episodes listen to all the episodes there's over 100 now he's even a guest on one of the episodes it's fantastic (laughs) thank you so much i appreciate that if anyone's interested in that uh interview the director of weird his name is uh eric appel so i think it's like around the in the first 30 or something but yeah check that out Dude. dude absolutely sweet all right Gabe. thank you for having me this was a lot of fun i uh, if you ever want me back i'll i'll come back oh absolutely dude, dude you're fantastic what? man <laughs> oh man 
Yeah. Um, you ready to wrap this up, my friend? Gabe? Let's wrap it up, dude. Let's wrap it up. Um, you know, follow us on Who Let You Pod on all the handles. Uh, you know that by now. Don't um. ever watch a movie. Watch zero movies. They're dangerous. They're gonna give you trauma, and they're terrible. Unless, unless Andy, what type of movie should they watch? They should watch a movie that is gonna make you want to walk around alone. On a spaceship. Get some alone time. Yeah. Hang out with your friends. <laughs> Share a cigarette in space. Yeah. Get some cilantro. Join a union. Join a union, you guys. Be part of the working man. Get get paid. Watch that sort of movie. Absolutely. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs> to space! You've just heard a Doomsday Initiative podcast. Consult a physician. Oh.